Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Amanda from A Joyful Scrapper. Uh, today we're going to be playing along with Christy's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches. This lovely sketch today is by Susan Stringfellow from Sketch Savvy. When I first saw this sketch, I immediately had a few different ideas of how I wanted to go about it. The first one I thought about was uh, basically using washi tape, but I have already done that before. So then I thought maybe I could do some just like wordy bit strips. And then I started thinking about all of the shimmers paints that I have collected over this past year. And I decided that's what I would really like to focus on. I kind of just had this idea in the back of my mind about taking rainbows, colors of my shimmers paints and creating those basically the strips part of the sketch out of paint and that's what you see me doing here uh, in the video i used 18 different shimmers paints um, a bunch of inklings like one or two vibes and a bunch of shimmers and creamies as well so i, I just ran the whole gamut there of my shimmers collection and at first I started using different sizes of brushes just to kind of get different strokes and um, maybe just different widths. And I kind of I kind of did that for a little bit and then I stopped part way through. Um, you'll see me here. You're only going to see me do stripes for about this first little part and then it'll skip forward to having the stripes complete. Um, basically, it just looked like this the whole time me just making stripes and I figured you didn't need to see all of that um, but I did do it all along with um, the rainbow colors you're gonna see here there we go that's when I was done just with the painting portion of it I was pretty happy with how that turned out uh, but then of course me being me I decided that um, along with the stripes I definitely needed some splatty bits as well I did not do every color of splatty bits for each color I used. I basically just took one out of each of the color sets. So for the pinks, I chose one to do splatty bits with. With the orange, I chose one. Um, most of the time I chose the lightest one because I didn't want the splatty bits to be the focal point of the whole thing. I wanted the rainbow itself to stand out more than the splatters. So for most of them, I chose the lightest color in each color set um, but if it was a shimmers paint I didn't feel like watering that down anymore to make splatty bits so I would choose the next one if it ended up being a shimmers color I love shimmers they're nice they're nice and thick and they have so much glitter um, I don't like to water them down because then you lose a lot of that um, glitter so I would just choose one of the inklings or creamies um, that was next in line if that happened to be the lightest color of the color set that I used. You see me here just dabbing up a bit here and there with a paper towel. There were a few times where a color would go crazy. I think with the yellows it happened and then definitely with the blues it happened again where when I tried to splatter it would go up onto some of the other colors that I didn't want it to be on. So um, I went ahead and I wiped it up. The reason I was able to do that is before I started this project, I'd made a few papers that were already treated with gesso. I used Liquitex clear gesso over the top of this whole sheet because I knew at some point I would want to do some kind of a, a big mixed media page. And so I already had these prepared. That's why you don't see me doing it. Um, I like to make a few at a time. It's kind of a messy process to put the gesso all over a sheet of paper. And so I like to just prep some beforehand and let them dry. So this was an already prepped sheet. And what the gesso allows you to do is it gives you a little bit of time um, after you have done your mixed media and it gives you some time for it so that it doesn't soak right into the paper so you can fix a few mistakes and you can combine colors and spray more water and let things combine and run. It's a really, really cool product and I really enjoy um, using it on my pages. So that is the way, reason I can blot things up that I don't like. Um, here I am just 
uh, toning down the color just a little bit like I said I wanted those stripes on the side to stand out but not necessarily the splatters I wanted them to be a little more subtle than the stripes okay so here is the second part of my idea of what I wanted to do with the colored stripes and that is to add different stitching in matching thread color to each stripe so instead of doing the strips of paper I decided to do the shimmers and then a different stitch for each one right there I'm showing you um, I had a little problem with one of the stitches I was doing so it made a hole in my paper but I just figured I could cover that up with some embellishments and all would be just fine so this photo here it's kind of a random photo that I found that I took on my way to work one day the sky just was absolutely gorgeous on my way to work and I think I'm sitting at a stoplight right there and I just took my phone and snapped a picture real quick generally pictures don't turn out that nice that I take when it's kind of dark outside so I was surprised that this one still showed me all the color it just was such a gorgeous sunrise that I could not stop myself from taking that photo and I'm glad that I had it because when I had this idea uh, the colors in that photo and the colors with the shimmers paints just absolutely work together uh, I and I don't know how I ended up having just such a perfect match but I did so this page although there's a lot to it it's actually a pretty simple page all I used honestly were the shimmers um, and then I did the stitching and then for all of um, the cluster that I'm building around the photo I'm using uh, the packet from 49 and market this is their um, spectrum sherbet collection and um, it's the strawberry lemonade I believe that's what it's called I used the ephemera kit, which is what you see me picking through right now. It has so many awesome pieces to it. Um, tickets, as you can see, I've pulled out different frames. Um, the circle things, I forget what they're called. Um, I don't remember what they're called, but I remember when I was a kid, I used to use like a little a clicky machine that you could go through and you could look at photos, but that's, that's what that reminds me of. Um, but I love those circly bits there. Um, it, it just has so many things tags you can see a tag I've used up there too. different uh, ephemera pieces and cut up um, die cut pieces it's just an amazing amazing set and there was like 96 pieces in it so awesome deal I think I got it for like $7.99 this is the second layout I've used a ton of it on and I still have a ton left so awesome deal if you can get your hands on 49 and market any of this um, ephemera sets go for it because they are the best deal ever all I'm doing here is I'm just looking through this set and pulling out anything that I like honestly uh, by the way that I'm building it nothing was planned ahead of time for what I wanted to use I am trying to follow along slightly with the sketch. The sketch, if you can see there, there's the photo of the sketch laying there. Um, it has a circle element right there where I put the little film reel looking thing. Uh, so I did try to follow along somewhat. It also has uh, like a little tag or a little uh, label sticking out from that film thing. And I used uh, the two banner pieces right there that you see for my title, which was pure joy and best ever. So uh, the other set that you just saw me empty out, that is also from 49 in Market. This is the chipboard set for the um, Spectrum Sherbet uh, series. And it just has chipboard pieces that... Um, match with the entire collection so the ephemera i got was only the strawberry lemonade so it just has the oranges the pinks the yellows in it but the chipboard piece has the colors of the whole collection which is still those pinks oranges and yellows but you also get the blues and the greens in there and since i used a rainbow on the side i wanted to pull in some of that green and that blue so i'm going to do that with the chipboard pieces that you see me kind of fitting through here and um, just trying to see what fits and what i like 
Um, as I've said in some other videos, I tend to be pretty heavy handed when it comes to embellishment. Um, as much as I think that this is a simple page, some might look at it and be like, man, there's a lot of stuff there. But the reason that I feel like it's so simple is because I'm not really using a wide variety of product. It's really just the shimmers. Um, the cardstock that I grabbed, which is basil textured white cardstock, it's just plain old white. And um, I just used these two uh, pieces, this uh, ephemera pack from 49 to market and the chipboard set. A little later on, you will see me add one other thing. And I will tell you once we get there, um, you'll be able to see it in just a little bit because I do try to cut some stuff that I'm working on or else you'd be watching this forever. These videos are already about 20 minutes long and I don't seem to be able to make them any shorter. Even when I cut all of the time I was working on the background here, uh, they still seem to be 20 minutes long, but I like to allow you to see my process, especially when I'm decorating using the ephemera and all of the embellishments. I like you to see kind of the thought process of the things that I'm going, going with and how I change my mind. Even towards the end of this, you'll see some of the placement is a little different, or I might choose something else instead of one of these pieces that I'm sitting right now, sitting in right now, uh, just because, you know, my vision changes or I like something a little bit different. You should never be afraid to kind of go off from what you originally planned. Um, even with the sketches and things, I very rarely follow them to a T. Generally, I will take the overall concept. I will um, lay things out approximately how they have it. And other times I won't. Such as the other day um, when I was doing the very first sketch from um, Christie's Beautiful Life uh, uh, Best of 30 Days of Sketches. When I did day one, the sketch had circle elements uh, alongside the strip of photos. However, I didn't have any circle elements that really worked with that. And I, so I decided to use square elements instead. These sketches are just a place to start, really. You don't have to follow them completely and totally. Uh, I know for some that's really hard and you wanna just stay exactly as it was, but it's always okay to make a change, to be creative, to uh, interpret a sketch however you want to. That's what they're out there for. They're just for inspiration and you can do ultimately whatever you feel is the best for your layout. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, before I cut, I actually off camera went and glued down, um, glued together that big pack of things that you see sitting there, basically all the matting, I will call it matting for the photo. So that that big portion right there is all glued together, but it's not quite glued down on the page yet. So uh, with my photo, all I did was I added just a one little layer of tissue paper. And that was just to give it just kind of a soft break away from all of the matting on the underside. I felt like the matting was just, I mean, there's nothing, nothing wrong with it. I loved it. I love everything about it, but I wanted that picture to just have kind of a subtle separation from the matting underneath it. So I added that one little piece of tissue paper. <clears throat> the flowers that you see here, uh, they came from a Paige Evans embellishment kit that I got. Um, I actually got it in one of my hip kit orders when they just had the National Scrapbooking Day and they had um, like a, a mystery, I want to call it a mystery box, but it was like a mystery embellishment set that you could order. So I ordered that and I got those Paige Evans flower flowers embellishments in inside that um, little embellishment kit that I got. And they were just so bright and perfect and they matched so well to the rainbow colors that I was using and to the 49 in market chipboard that I decided to throw them in here. I mean, who doesn't love some florals? So you just see me here kind of tucking those things around, deciding where I wanna add them. And they just give another layer of interest and beauty to the page. 
And um, so you just see me here kind of trying to figure out where I want them. <clears throat> so I went to stick this little orange flower down and I realized, oh, I haven't stuck down the photo yet and the big mat of things. So I'm gonna take the moment here to do that. As you can see, see how they're just all stuck together. Um, sometimes I like to do that, especially when I have a great big pile, I'm gonna say, of matting underneath a photo that I want a specific way. So sometimes I will kind of stick all those together before I actually stick them down on the page. And when I put that orange flower down, I realized that I had not yet stuck that down on the page. So I just went ahead and did that. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish putting these flowers in where I had uh, originally had them sitting. Um, if y'all remember the little hole that I had made in the page when I was sewing. Uh, I've covered that up with the best ever um, tag. I was really lucky that the um, the sketch already called for there to be like a tag over that or a banner or something and so I still stuck to this sketch even though I had to cover up a mistake. You never have to throw away something that you mess up okay you can always try to figure out how you can still use that piece there have been plenty of backgrounds i've started to make that i just did not like for the project that i was doing and so very rarely have i ever just thrown something completely away that i've worked really really hard on i mean these backgrounds especially the mixed media backgrounds they can take quite a while to finish and sometimes i just don't turn out the way that you want them to. But my advice is just set it aside. Even if you think it's the ugliest thing you've ever seen, even if you think you messed it up completely, you never know what you could use it for. Um, I have taken messed up backgrounds and I've used them in different projects as matting behind a photo before. I've used them to cut out uh, shapes with and then like, like, for instance, like with a dye, like a butterfly or a flower dye or something where you're going to just take a small portion of it and I found that I could really make some beautiful things out of these these background pages or these layouts that I thought that I had messed up so do yourself a favor if you're really unhappy with something in the way that it turns out don't throw it out have a little place where you can just set it aside at least for a little while um, and then maybe one day just pull it out and see if you can make something else out of it. It doesn't have to be what you originally started using it for because you never know how you might be able to use it and, and how it might be really beautiful on a different project. So um, I'm getting near the end of putting together all of the embellishments on this page. I played around for quite a while with those two flowers up there. I just couldn't decide which one I liked where but I'm gonna end up leaving it right like that uh, I liked the shape of the blue flower to be underneath that little green frame there and then you just see me ruffling up the edges I just like to do that to make there be a little bit more dimension on the page and you know just to just to give it a little more interest I really love bulky and showy embellishments. Lately, I've been using mostly chipboard and ephemera type elements, but back in the day when I was first scrapbooking, I was absolutely and completely in love with anything metal on my page. Um, I used to buy these metal kits. Um, I used to buy them from Stampin' Up. They used to have this hardware kit that I was absolutely in love with. I've actually still got like each one of them and I hoard them. I just absolutely love them and I don't want to use them because they don't sell them anymore. And so I get scared that if I use them all, I'm going to want them again. So I just don't use them at all. I know it, it's crazy. I, I just need to use them whenever they are deemed appropriate and I need them on, a, on one. So I'm going to try and make that part of something that I add to my layouts is get my hardware kits out, put my brads in put the little hinges on that come with it because I still love that kind of stuff. I still love anything that makes my page come alive, pop up off the page. Um, 
I also used to use quite a bit of ribbon and fiber and I need to pull that stuff back out too. It seems like that's not really quote unquote in right now um, to use fiber like it used to be, but I still have a bunch of it and I still love it. So I need to figure out a way to add those to my pages. Um, so at the end here, as I was finishing up my page, I was really struggling to figure out how I wanted to put these last few pieces of ephemera on the page. I had these few butterflies that I pulled out and I definitely wanted to use them. But in the sketch, there was supposed to be a title there on the bottom, but I didn't feel like I wanted another title. I liked what I had there with um, the little banner pieces. I thought that that just really fit with the design I was going with, with all of the colors and um, the stitching. And with the stitching, you know, I left like the ends on there, which I've never done before. Uh, but I've seen people do it and I thought, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to see how it looks. I could always cut them off if I didn't like it in the end. But I like the messy look to it. I like that it adds that extra layer of interest and that extra um, dimension and texture. That's the word I'm looking for. It adds texture to the page, even though it looks kind of messy. But I kind of am in love with it. I, I like that they're all hanging there and that you can see all the different colors of the thread against the white paper in the end. So with all of that, I really felt like I didn't want any more down at the bottom. I felt like it would detract from the mixed media background and everything that I had put into that. I mean, that had taken me the majority of the time was making that background and stitching those lines into it. And I put so much thought into what, which lines I wanted where and which type of stitching and the color scheme. And so I didn't want to cover it up anymore than it already was. <clears throat> so even though I kind of struggled here at the end to kind of figure out where I wanted those butterflies and um, where they looked best, I'm pretty happy with how it ended up here at the end. Um, and it's pretty much done here. I just take a minute to kind of play around with those strings and put them where I want them. And um, I know I'm going to think about adding something else here at the end. I pick up a little um, package of puff puffy hearts, but when I looked back, I decided, no, this is good. And so this is the finished product. I hope you all have enjoyed watching today. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more and uh, I will see y'all next time. Bye for now.